This video is about LED lamps for cars, and in particular, the T10 type, I mean there's other types as well, but most notably the ones that describe themselves as CAN bus compatible. And this is kind of vague because CAN bus is a communication network, and there's no communication at all onto these. The only difference between these and ordinary uh, LED lamps is that they have an extra load in them to make them look like a, a traditional tungsten lamp for systems that monitor the, uh, the load. So, if we take a look at the form of these, the original T10 lamp, it was designed to be manufactured very cheaply, so it's a traditional lamp, but the seal was pinched at the end, the glass was pinched, um, and there'd be the beads, there'd be the filament support wires, the filament across them, and then it'd come down and it, the one lead was folded over one side in the glass, and the other lead was folded over the other side in the glass. And the lamp holders for them were just simply uh, designed to take the end of that glass lamp with the, a springy metal contact that would make contact with either side and it would light. So inevitably when LED lamps started coming out they made a slight variant. They, uh, initially they started these plastic bases and then they moved on to a much simpler version which is just printed circuit boards. And the printed circuit boards were just sized to be as thick as the glass seal. And they had a pad on either side, well it's double-sided board, and they would make contact with the connectors in the, the lamp holder. And the circuit, the initial circuit was very simple, you just had a resistor and then as many LEDs, either just three LEDs, or if you wanted it to be a brighter lamp uh, you could have had more LEDs in parallel again. And in some cases they just use one resistor per string of LEDs, other, other cases they just use one resistor for everything, uh, just to keep it as small as possible. So the downside of that was that when you put these lamps in, so here's a, a blue one, and I'll just plug it in a random direction and it doesn't light. If I plug it in the other direction, oop, it does light, and that's simply because well, with that circuit, you know, because it could get put in either way round, there was a 50-50 chance you get it the right way round. And if you look at the feedback for some eBay sellers, you get you see listings for this symbol type of lamp, and the feedback is, like, negative. You know, half of these didn't work, and there's a very good chance that be the reason half of them didn't work was because half of them were plugged in the wrong way round. So the next step uh, after that, they uh, added a bridge rectifier, so that no matter what way you put it round, and I'll just abbreviate the bridge rectifier in my usual lazy way, they could then just use the same arrangement of LEDs, and no matter which way you plugged it in, it would light. The downside of this arrangement was that some of the lamps in a car, like side indicator lights and stuff like that, need to be a, a high enough load to be detected because there, there's lamp monitoring circuitry and the lamp monitoring circuitry is just simply it's a, a resistor, a low value resistor, but when the lamp's passing enough current, the voltage across that resistor will be sensed and it knows that lamp's, you know, there and it, if you just plug a, an ordinary LED lamp like this into one of those sockets, it may actually come up in the dashboard a warning saying, you know, lamp, fail, lamp failure or lamp fault because Although the LED is lit, it's not passing enough current to uh, trigger that sort of circuit. So the way they got around that was they just added a big fat resistor across the um, connectors here. And quite often it's just soldered physically across. Uh, hold on. Here's the version without that resistor where it's just the bridge rectifier and then the strings of LEDs with resistor per string of LEDs. And here's the version where they've got that canvas thing in, where they've soldered, in this case, a 120 ohm resistor across those contacts. Now, if you consider that uh, typically the voltage in a car, uh, while it's running, is going to be approximately 14 volts, might be higher, might be lower, but it's going to be approximately 14 volts, then 14 volts divided by 120 ohms equals 116 milliamps, and when you multiply that by the 14 volts, you're going to get 1.6 watts. That's quite a lot of power. I mean, okay, it was the lamp, the original lamps would have been rated one or two watts, but um, it's 
still going to generate a lot of heat. And to give you an idea of how much heat it's going to generate, I tested these ones and um, this little one got up and at peak temperature before I decided chickened out because this was an open air as well and to, I took leads off because the leads were starting to get hot and plasticky it peaked at 230 degrees centigrade and you think you've already got the LED junction temperature because they're pushing the LEDs and these little things quite hard and then they've got that resistor in it as well and I suppose ultimately the, these lamps are designed for use in flashers and indicators perhaps that they're not going to be lit you know, all the time and when they are lit they're going to be flash on and off. But if you actually put one into a holder just as a, a general illumination lamp, then that is going to get very, very hot. In this case, it got hot enough to melt completely. The circuit board just charred. And Graham discovered uh, the chapter sent these in. He discovered uh, this when he had left the lights on his dashboard. He'd used these in his dashboard, I think. And he came into his car and smelled a burning. And he was like looking for where the smell of burning was. And it was this LED lamp was just, oh, it stinks. It really smells like burnt electronics. And that uh, high temperature isn't really making these LEDs happy at all either. Um, they don't seem to last that long before they start flickering. Um, I'll plug that one in since it's, it gets hot quite quickly. These ones have the bridge rectifier formed as discrete diodes. Uh, four discrete diodes, plus they've got one resistor. Uh, and in the case of this one, they've got uh, where there's two LEDs on each side. They've got the LEDs just as just two in series, but then two in parallel of those circuits. And uh, uh, that's a 56 ohm resistor they're using for that because it's dropping about six volts. Um, with the three LED version, where they've got two sets of three LEDs, they're using a 20 ohm resistor. And um, I don't know if this is going to start flickering and flashing. It certainly did when I was testing it, but I did give it longer to heat up. Um, but uh, that is already getting too hot to touch. And you think, that's not great for LEDs. So the moral of the story is, if you're buying these T10 LEDs, the ones that are described as CAN bus are really only rated. They're only really safe to use for indicators, something that's just going to be flash on and off, as a wee side light or something, they're really not suitable for use for in instrument clusters or stuff like that because they will get very, very hot and ultimately self-destruct and possibly worse. I mean, they could actually damage any, any plastic in the vicinity they get so hot. So, um, yes, it's kind of interesting. Uh, it's really quite dramatic the way this one's failed. Uh, so... Always look out for those little resistors. You usually see one, if you even check it with the meter, you'll see one that's just soldered directly across those leads. And they're the ones that are passing themselves, that's still hot, uh, as the canvas compatible ones, but uh, not really suitable for continuous operation.